In the streets of a busy and noisy city, on the shore of the Indian Ocean, in a small animal shop, lives a bird. He's been held there for several months, far away from his home, the forest. He's surrounded by animals that were brought here from all over the country. But in a way, he's actually all alone. Nobody knows where his parents and siblings have gone. Why is this bird so special? For the past few decades, this species has been considered extinct. But recent findings show this bird still being held in captivity in several places. There is just a small amount of hope that this species, the Nias minor, will survive for the next generation. This is Sumatra, the world's sixth biggest island. Few islands on our planet are as culturally and biologically diverse as this one. The people who live here have had to confront some of Mother Nature's greatest extremes. Attacked by some of the strongest earthquakes, hit by destructive tsunamis, and covered with active volcanoes, Sumatra is one of the most dangerous places to live. During our visit, Mount Sinabung, an active volcano in North Sumatra, erupted after three years of being dormant. It emitted a cloud of ash several kilometers high. Thousands of people had to be evacuated. The area around the volcano is well known for its hot springs, with boiling water rushing from the ground and pouring into the river system. Thanks to volcanic soil filled with nutrients, the country turned into a lush green land covered with rainforests. The jungle is not only the home of the popular forest man, the Sumatran orangutan, but also the Sumatran tiger, rhinoceros, and many other species that can only be found on this island. The biggest lake in Southeast Asia, Danau Toba, is also located on Sumatra, with steep volcanic massifs that surround its dark blue waters. The whole lake is really a crater that was created in one of the largest eruptions on Earth, about 75,000 years ago. The native Bataks, who have lived here for hundreds of years, still inhabit this area, isolated from the world around it. Our final destination was the small island of Nias, located near the northern shores of Sumatra. The island is a magical place where time stands still and people are fully aware of the power of nature. Many of them lost family members in the tsunami of 2004 and in the powerful earthquake that followed a few months later. Although some parts of the coastline have been heavily deformed by the earthquake, one can still find beautiful, secluded beaches along the shore. If you dive beneath the water, you discover a rich, underwater world that surrounds the island, filled with colorful corals and fish. At the southern point of the island is the famous Soraki Beach, it is claimed to have some of the highest seasonal waves in the world, making it a favorite spot for surfers. What is really compelling about the island is that it was home to one of the oldest megalithic cultures in Indonesia. It was not that long ago when the natives still performed human sacrifices and hunted the human skulls of their enemies. The huge megaliths and impressive stone statues are considered to be more than 3,000 years old. However, their purpose has changed over the decades. Nowadays, some of them are used as dryers for clothes or as playgrounds for children. The traditional villages consist of two rows of wooden houses with wide paved alleys in the middle. It functions as the heart of the village, with people chatting and children playing.
most villages were built on elevated hills, and to get there you need to climb many stairs made of stone. These villages are also home to an interesting tradition, stone jumping. Young single men have to jump over these high stones as part of their war training. Our mission on the island was somewhat different. We came here in search of its rare endemic bird. Hilnias <laughs> Minor was also used as a part of traditional medicine. If there were some mute kids in uh, villages, Shamans went to the forest, found the species, make a soup out of it, and because this bird talks really well, they thought and they believed that it would help to the kids who are mute. After more than 20 years of ignorance about this species, the first ISCP expedition to the Nias Island confirmed that a few Nias miners had survived, but in captivity. On August 2013, me, and Thomas Busina was uh, sent to Nias to survey and monitoring about uh, Nias Maina. We do travel around the south side of uh, Nias and we found many, many Maina, but a lot of people keep the Maina as a pet, but we're not sure that uh, Nias Maina. But we also uh, believe that a uh, few of them as a uh, Nias Maina. That's why for this we need more time and more data, also more finance for do the research. Following the first survey on Nias, we visited the island again. Our mission was clear. Gather as much information as possible about the Nias Maina. Have you ever seen the Nias Maina in nature? No, never. I never seen the Dracula Robusta in nature, but only in the bed, in some house. And why do the people keep this specific bird? Yeah, because uh, some people, it is hobby, I think, hobby. And then some people want to get some money. They buy a small uh, Dracula Robusta, or other Dracula and then after can speak some word and can sing they sell so they get some money some profit and do you know some people who have this Dracula star space? yeah I know and can you show me on the map which after talking to a local guide we learned the location of several households that could possibly be the home of the valuable bird <laughs> We traveled door to door, documenting all the miners we could find. But surprisingly, most of the birds that were considered to be Nias miners by their owners were actually a different species of miner. So basically what we did is we traveled the northern parts of the Nias Island trying to find the Nias miner, which got much more difficult than we thought in the beginning. Uh, we found many birds, we found, found many minas in the Nias Island. The problem was that none of these birds, or almost none of these birds, had the characteristics of the Nias mina. So the situation got a bit tangled up, a bit more complicated, and we were getting depressed that it's not possible to find the Nias mina an anymore. Fortunately, with the help of our friends, experts, with the help of literature and the local people, we saw that there is a combination of characteristics for which we can say that this bird is 100% Nias Maina. And so we found about four or five of these birds which are 100% Nias Maina. And that's great because these are the birds that need to be protected. These are the birds that need the conservation attention. Although it was quite challenging, we managed to find several birds of the species still remaining. One large Nias miner was kept in the village of Gormo, located in the heart of the forests on the island. It was kept next to a cage with the common hill miner, so we could clearly observe the morphological difference between these two species. But where do these birds come from? To get an answer, we visited a bird owner who claimed to have seen a group of wild miners in the forest. 
Di saat saya pergi ke kebun, tanpa sengaja kan saya membawa senap angin. Lalu saya lihat itu burung di atas. Kebetulan yang kecil ini ada di bawah, lalu saya tembak dengan senap angin. Jatuh dan saya bawa ke rumah, saya kawat kembali. Saya ajarkan sekitar 4 bulan. Setelah dia agak bisa mengerti sedikit, lalu ada orang yang berminat, saya jual tawar menawar dan setelah itu mereka bawa ke Gunung Stoli, lalu saya pun tidak tahu entah mau dikemanain lagi. The man agreed to guide us to the forest and show us the location where he observed the birds. We spent the next several days wandering the forest, looking at every tree, listening to every sound and noticing every movement hoping that we could be the first to take a picture of a wild Nias minor. Our second guide even tried to imitate the sounds of the bird. Unfortunately, despite several exhausting days in the forest, we couldn't find any sign of the wild minor. Not even a single sound. It is important for us, that our team found, that a lot of uh, minas which are kept in captivity in Nias, uh, have climbed origin in uh, Telo Island, which is a tiny island here in the Papu Archipelago. That would mean that the lots of mina which are held in captivity in Nias, in, on Nias Island, are actually not Nias mina. Particularly the individuals from uh, Telo Island are very, very similar to the Nias, Nias Mina, Dracula Robusta. The problem behind all of this is there's a lot of bird trafficking, a lot of bird transportation between islands in Indonesia, specifically between the Nias Island, the Telo Island and uh, Sumatra, for example. We saw a lot of birds getting transferred from Nias Island to Sumatra on the boat, on the ferry boat. The illegal pet trade is a big problem for many animals in Indonesia, not only the Nias minor. Many other animals, such as reptiles and mammals, including primates, are being held in captivity and sold as house pets. Many species are brought from different islands to the Medan market, one of the largest animal markets in Indonesia. The conditions in which the animals are kept are horrifying. We left the Nias Island for a while and arrived back in North Sumatra at the ISCP Animal Rescue Center. My main job is a zookeeper in Medan Zoo. Uh, I like animal because every day I see animal in the zoo. So that's why I like uh, doing conservation, wildlife conservation. Our first program is a poxai project, Garulax Bicoral, and then we keep on project with the entomophagy program and also we make uh, teaching English free for the kids around this village and the third project now we starting with the Nias, Nias Maina, uh, Gracula Robusta. Now we are in the ESCP Rescue Center land and we will build uh, some cage here for Maina, Nias Maina and we will, uh, we will uh, reproduce here and if we are successful we will release it back to the forest. So many NGOs uh, care about and make conservation about orangutan, Sumatra tiger, or elephant here in Indonesia, or rhinoceros. But so many wildlife in the nature, even the protected or non-protected wildlife, uh, they almost forget it. So that's why we choose uh, the small species like Poxai uh, Garulax bicolor, Latin name, and then Nias Maina, uh, Gracula Robusta. So we have to save them. If we are uh, not safe, who, who else uh, try to, to save this species? We managed to get one of these precious birds from a restaurant owner in Nias and transferred it to the center. Once the aviaries are finished, more discovered miners will be brought to the center to start breeding. This is the first Nias Maina that we get from Nias Island. We bring to our center. Now we put 
for in the like small quarantine because we still building the artillery. After the maybe five days or ten days again, the artillery will be finished. We will be able to, uh, transfer this bird to the avian. Hopefully. Uh, after we successful to breed this uh, Nias Maina, the next generation in Nias still can see the wild Nias Maina in Nias Forest. The Nias Maina is entering a new chapter in its history. It is in our hands to ensure the survival of this endangered species and return the symbol of Nias back home. Unfortunately, this bird has become a victim of the illegal pet trade in Indonesia. The black market scarred its health and it could not be transferred to the rescue center. Who knows how many are left, kept in cages, isolated from their home island, with no chance of seeing a member of their own species ever again.